Good morning. Does God punish peoples? Our reading today is at Jeremiah chapter 27, and we're going on now to verses 7 and 8. And here is what those say. So all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the time of his land comes. And then many nations and great kings shall make him serve them. And it shall be that the nation and kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. So here's a prophecy of reversal. First, there's going to be a period of time in which Babylon rules, and God is telling these other nations, you know, Babylon's going to be the superpower. You're going to need to take that into account and be, in some respect, under his yoke. But it's also a limited period. You know, after a time, Babylon will serve you. Very interesting. There's going to be a period of time where you will not be preeminent, but after that, you will not be under the yoke of Babylon. So God is kind of giving them a encouragement. Yes, for now it's got to be this way, but it won't be that long and things will be very different. But you know, so many times it's all about the moment. It's not anything about long term or even medium term. It's, it's, it's all about the very moment. What will the people think about what we're doing in this moment? What are the political ramifications of all this in this moment? And so rulers sometimes can have a short, a very short vision instead of a longer vision. God always kind of calls us to that longer perspective. Be careful about this because over here you're going to regret it. God is always helping us to think about the longer term. So the reign of Babylon is only going to last for a relatively short time. And rather than predicting several generations of successors for Nebuchadnezzar, you know, Babylon just kind of continues forever indefinitely, which probably is what it seemed like at the time on the ground. This phrase here, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's son and his son's son, that might have just been a kind of a general statement, kind of a formulaic statement about uh, you will not be indefinitely under the thumb of Babylon. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that. Maybe it just meant that the time of that Babylon exists would only be indefinite. Although at the moment, it probably seemed like this is a superpower. This is going to go on endlessly. There's no end in sight. It's just, you know, Rome all the way out. It's Babylon all the way out. It's United States of America all the way up. No, nations rise and nations fall. God sets them up. God takes them down. So no, nothing's ever that long. The kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is, but not these other human kingdoms. And, you know, we don't want to admit it, but we exist at God's pleasure, not at our own pleasure. God is fair and just, and in certain respects, he's predictable. He, he, has, he outlines his moral program. We know what right and wrong is, what his law is. We can, we can sort of work from there. So he lets us know about that so we can work with him. So, yes, it's true. In some respects, he's quite predictable. And it's also true that very often, although he shows us what we should do, we are disobedient. He's sovereign and we're disobedient. So sometimes we get outcomes we really didn't want to have, but we were playing it too close to the edge. We weren't really trying to obey. We weren't trying to serve at his pleasure. That's a problem. How easily and often we tend to act against his will, and then we just expect he's going to be fine. He's going to look the other way. It's going to be, you know, indulgent grandpa all the way down the way. And that indicates a wrong spirit on our part. And, you know, the nations should have received encouragement here, but there's very little record that they acted on this in the way that could have could have really blessed them. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, proper chastening should be a great help to us. Only the foolish refuse to learn from their mistakes. Many times, Lord, we will admit it. We have been foolish. We have we've sown the whirlwind and we've reaped confusion and we've reaped punishment. Oh Lord, help us to be right. Help us to remember that you are sovereign. You are God, we are not, that you are in ultimate control, and you do give us guidance and direct us for what you want us to do. And we know that's what's best for us. So bless, we pray, Lord, and help us to be your servants, even in times where there's enormous confusion, which I guess right now is one of those times. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So yes, God makes people accountable, and then he tries to bless us. And we need to come along and be wise and Look to doing it God's way. We'll always be glad we did. So this day, he's on his throne. Let you and I have a wonderful day as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ.